Well, this is the Grand Challenge Cup. It's the regatta's oldest event for men's eights. We have got the new holders of the world's best time. We're just flying over Johannes Wiesenfeld, the Bau, Westfalen Bauman of the German eight. And uh, these guys are the fastest eight the world has ever seen. That's they are going, yeah, they, yeah, well, they are the fastest eight, five, five, eighteen. Nobody's ever gone quicker than that. And uh, they are going head to head with the Kiwis. Kiwi eight race them in Poznan. Finished about four seconds behind them. Poznan regatta happened a couple of weeks ago in Poland. So these two crews will know each other well from that competition. I just wonder, I don't know what conditions are like. We've maybe seen some close to record times. I can't see them getting close to that time for the Grand and the record time, which is uh, a phenomenal time. What the is conditions, it? yeah, the conditions at Poznan were superb, weren't they? We saw a number of records fall. And, and to say that this is the fastest eight the world has ever seen, the fastest eight of all time, is quite phenomenal. It must give you a bit of confidence sitting there in that German eight, Martin. Yeah, well, it is. I asked their coach, Uwe Bender, you know, he's a, he's a lovely lad. He's coached um, in Australia, coached women's lightweight doubles. He's taken over this year from Ralph Holtmeyer, and I, I kind of said, you know, what's your 2K ergo average? He looked at me blankly, like, why would I know that? And, you know, I think if I was asking Jürgen Grobler what his 2K average, he would say, oh, yeah, it's a 2K, it's a so small. That's a Jürgen Grobler This is, you're talking about the rowing machine scores for those who aren't uh, rowing inside the side. The score on the rowing machine, it really measures raw power. Yeah, These but, guys are interested in speed. Yeah, but really, I mean, they're, they're, they're mid-550s, you know, they're nothing big, but they do it all on just beautiful cohesion, synergy, just the way they move together. Go. See how deliberate they were on that first and second stroke the Germans made. They really took their time there, great experience. They're in the hat in the seven seat, uh, that's the second. From the right here is uh, Richard uh, Schmidt, Richard Schmidt, uh, London 2012 gold medalist in the eight, Rio 2016 silver medalist behind the Brits, super uh, experience that he has in the critical seat in the German eight uh, with some younger athletes around him. Here we're looking uh, over to see. <laughs> To, to see their opponents trying to get into their rhythm, trying to set themselves up mentally. Um, how would you approach this mentally, Martin, if you were racing the fastest eight of all time? Well, I think you've got to love it because, you know, you, you want to do your trade and these New Zealanders are all professional rowers. You want to apply your trade against the, the best in the world and this is a fantastic opportunity head-to-head. -head. Johannes Ocek, the German stroke man, and uh, he was in the stroke of that. was well, just a warning, actually, and Martin Sauer has been told, get away from there. He really does like to send the puddles down, Martin. So. He is known for being pretty aggressive. We've seen this before from him, and you could see by how much they were correcting course there, how they encroached across onto the New Zealanders' water. And uh, he, he's an aggressive guy. I remember him being involved in, in moving across on the Brits a couple of years ago here at Henry. Well, it was a few years back, I think, Fred Smallbone, who's not umpiring now, but he was umpiring then. And, uh, you know, it was a different kind of rules than Sauer keeping a lookout. But he did sort of send some dirty paddles down to the British. The Germans were leading race done at that point. But the thing about this German crew, Matt, is it's not the speed in the first 250. It's the speed from 250 to 500 and then through that 500 metre marker. That's where they really keep the pace. Well, and tell that to the New Zealanders because it, if it's not the speed in the first 250 metres, the New Zealanders are struggling to, get, uh, to keep up with them. Yeah, the New Zealanders will because the Germans will just keep that pace in the... World Cup in Poznan, the Germans went through the 500 in 118, and then they went 119 for the second 500. That's just one second fade between the first and second 500. That's why they did that world's best time, and they just keep that pace going. Look, look at the way they're rowing. I mean, this is the best rowing in the world that you'll see because the bodies move together. We haven't got a shot of the blades, but you'll just see the cohesion, the looseness. It's almost, there's almost nothing unnecessary happening there, is it? It really doesn't look like they're racing even. It looks like they're doing a training piece. Yeah, and this is for any coach watching this, any schoolboy that may be not, not big on the ergo score, their, their crew aren't so big, you know, if you get your own technique right, if you get into a, a, a great sort of morale-boosting crew like this Germanate is, you know, once you're in the Germanate, it's, you know, they want to dominate. You don't have to be a big puller on the ergo to be the world's best. You really don't. And proof of it is the crew on the right. Yeah, it's fantastic to see that. And the, the Kiwis are doing their best to stay with the Germans here, as you look on, on the left of the picture. Um, but it's a tall order to race these guys um, with any degree of success and we know there's more to come in the second half of the race yeah we should mention i don't know if we can get a shot of the bowman in the new zealand eight james lasher and he was a former lightweight from the lightweight men's four came fifth in the rio olympics 
in that boat and of course the lightweight men's four has been abolished there's a shot of his back there james lasher i think he's gone up to about what from 72 kilos he's probably gone up to about 82 kilos or something like that he now. Weighed, in, weighed in at 85 kilos so that's quite a bit of weight gain from the sort of well, two and a half uh lightweight stand yeah it, i mean all credit to james lasher he i think he was in that really fast pair with uh, hamish bond one year when they won the uh because both of them from South Island, and they just won the New Zealand Nationals in, what was it, a really quick time. As you say that, Martin, I'm just looking, the New Zealanders have had a bit of a push there to see if they can get back on an overlap with the Germans, really aggressively attacking it and pushing on, uh, but the German power and rhythm and style holds strong, doesn't it? Well, I think, you know, if you're within a length of the Germans to the K, which is the 1,000 metre mark, you're going to be thinking that's a really good job because you know their pace through through that mark, the world's best time that they set. You you might think if you're a New Zealander, and their coach Gary Roberts will have told them this, that look, look at them in the third quarter. The second half of the race is where New Zealanders like to do their business. And if you haven't lost contact, maybe you can unsettle the Germans. It's a big ask. But that is probably what the Kiwis are trying to do at this point. Just looking there at Drikas Conradi, the uh, the very young 21-year-old stroke of the uh, New Zealand. I mean, they did a great job in Poznan, didn't they, to uh, a great tussle, tussle with the Brits uh, and came through that uh, pretty well. And they're still attacking the Germans. Uh, now, do you think the Germans are just taking it easy here to, uh, to save their energy for the next day? There's no way this Germanate is taken easy. I think this is a step up in performance from the Kiwis, Matt. It's, it's, it's a better performance than we've seen. They, they were relatively not so quick in the third quarter. They had a, they had a really bad opening heat in Poznan. They came, they came in much better in the final. But uh, this is a step up in performance. Well, Germans have got flexibility at both ends though. Yeah, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. I do think credit to the Kiwis. They really are pushing them on, and it's forcing the Germans to raise uh, to raise their rate of striking a little bit and to push that boat forward. And the Kiwis continue to uh, maintain something close to an overlap on the German eight here. So I think that can really give you a lot of confidence, you know, in Caleb Shepard, the cox of the Kiwi eight, the 24-year-old. He's cox in the Olympic final against, actually, Martin Zau, who's uh, looking after this German boat here. So. He will be saying this is a great row. He'll be giving real motivational encouragement. He'll probably be calling by name the rowers down the boat, and particularly the guys in the middle, Sean Kirkham and Stephen Jones at five and six, going to be putting it down. This is a good race from the Kiwis, but can't stress enough, it's the fastest eight in the world we're seeing here in there. Velo-sponsored green boat still out in front, and uh, it's going to be hugely difficult to overturn them. Everybody on their feet in the stewards' enclosure with respect, cheering on these two fantastic crews and eager to see the fastest eight in the world ever. The Germans as they approach the finish line, great style, great strength, great power. And the New Zealanders very close to them. We haven't got time to in commentary, but uh, you can see how hard the Germans are working there. Johannes Wiesenfeld in the bows, Felix Winberger. Max Planner with the beard, Torben Johansson, brother of Eric, who won that Olympic title in 2012. The new man, Jacob Snyder, in the boat. You can see him there in the five seat. They were quite harder than they expected there by the New Zealand. Great credit to the New Zealand crew for staying on terms. What I love is that time on the first. It's not about winning the race in the first three. It's about getting off with a stable platform, and, and then you just look at their, you know, transfer here into pace, and that is where they keep it. Just look at that. It's super confident, isn't it? A super confident style to know that you all you need to do is focus on getting the boat moving as fast as possible. Nothing wasted, no wasted effort there. Lovely work uh, from the German uh, strokeman Hannes Oko there. Yeah, from the Schweiner club, Johannes Ocek, and uh, sets up a nice rhythm. They've got three guys in this eight from that Olympic crew, four with the Cox, Martin Zauer. They've managed to, you know, retain their oarsmen better, I think, than the British squad have done the Germans and just set the rest of the guys that come in from the four and the pair and so on and, and they picked up that beautiful rhythm the Germans row. Yeah and look you see you can see they were they were a bit tired at the end they're hanging their heads a little bit that was that was quite a tough race for them pushing hard uh, onto the next day and they'll face the Brits in the final. Yeah they've been doing a lot of um, steady state work their coach Uwe Bender told me just to build up the endurance since that race in Poznan.